I believe that would probably be Representative Fox's question because I think the score comes from Ed and Labor Committee. Sorry. Um, have, you, have you seen the CBO score? I have not. I yeah, no, I, well, I, I would like to ask unanimous consent to insert in the record the CBO score, which basically says that this bill would increase the deficit by over $300 million. And I just find it particularly. What? 300 what? Million. But there is a manager's amendment. Uh, yeah, no, the, it, it, that corrects right. that. No, no, it, it doesn't. It does. According to this, is CBO, uh, uh, this is, uh, it says, let me read it to you here. Uh, estimated direct spending and revenue effects um, of the Rules Committee print uh, and the Choice Arrangement Act as amended by Amendment 8, which I assume is the manager's amendment. Nine, yeah, eight, it was $579 million. With your change, it's $300 million. I, Again, I, I, I point it out because um, the deal that was struck um, only a few weeks ago, uh, which punishes poor people, um, the whole fuss was over the deficit, and here we have, um, you know, a bill that, even with the fixes, uh, adds three hundred million dollars to the uh, to the deficit. I I, I just find that somewhat there's startling. No, uh, there's numerous payors that I'd be happy to pay that three hundred million dollars right, with. But, but so they're, they're not, they're, I don't believe it should be, um, and I believe my manager's not amendment in this paid. Bill. No, the manager's amendment does not, according to CBO, does not. It reduces it from what, 524? 579. 579 million to 300 million. I mean, guess 300 million is better than 579 million, but it's still 300 There's million. There's a lot of tax credits in the Inflation Reduction Act we could use to pay for that. Yeah. Well, the bottom line is in this bill, yeah, we, 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 we have a disagreement with you on that, but nonetheless, they're not included in, in, the, in this bill. Um, and, um, and, and the regulation that this um, you know, going back in response to Mr. Burgess, the regulation that this bill purports to codify discusses pur purchasing insurance that meets the ACA protections like essential benefits and lifetime limits or caps. This bill does not codify that element of the regulation. So uh, a, a less consumer-friendly administration could undo those pieces in the future, uh, and it is not correct to say that this bill codifies the ACA protections uh, for these arrangements. Uh, Mr. Um, Scott. You can price by past experience. If you've got a lot of people with pre-existing conditions, the price is going to be higher than average. People are going to look at it and say, no, I'm going to stay in the ACA regular pool. That's why when you have an ACA plan, it'll always be cheaper because if you randomly distribute the uh, groups, some will be higher, some will be lower. Those that are going to charge higher than average will not be viable plans. Nobody will buy the product, only those with lower plans. And so you've gotten healthy people coming out. Good evening, friends. I have big news to share with you this Saturday. Many states are now tapping into their own rainy day funds. Financial relief worth thousands of dollars is being made available to select Americans in several states. Also, Democrats have unveiled a billion-dollar plan to provide renters and homeowners with extra aid. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to learn if you are eligible. Also, do stay tuned because I'll be announcing the winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway. My dear friends, please make sure that you enter these weekly giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these weekly giveaways. Many states have avoided tapping into their rainy day funds since the outset of the crisis. In general, states were cautious about using their dedicated savings accounts initially because of uncertainty about how the crisis and resulting recession would unfold, as well as the availability and extent of federal aid. Instead of first drawing down savings, most states manage fiscal 2020 budget gaps through a combination of spending cuts and early federal aid to state governments. This year, several states have announced big budget surpluses and what their plans are for the money. 
This week, House Democrats unveiled a $20.9 billion plan to deliver property tax relief to residents of Texas through tax compression, increasing the homestead exemption, and offering renters annual rebates. The new plan would also build annual teacher pay raises into the state's school financing system. The bill, proposed by Democratic Representative John Bryant, combines ideas from the previous House and Senate plans. The legislation includes inflation relief for renters and looks to shore up teacher pay. In a news conference announcing the bill and its companion joint resolution, House Democrats said the proposal would allow for continued and sustainable relief for homeowners as well as for teachers. Representative John Bryant stated that his proposal includes a raise to the state's basic allotment for school funding by $1,000. The allotment increase, which would be tied to and move with inflation, would direct future increases to the allotment continue to account for raising teacher pay. Thus, Democrats said the plan would result in a permanent annual raise of $4,300 for teachers. This is through a $15 billion expenditure. Under the property tax package, homeowners would be eligible for a homestead exemption of $100,000 or an amount equivalent to 25% of their home's value, though that exemption would be capped at $200,000. In the state of Montana, Democratic lawmakers approved a plan that would bring taxpayers new rebate checks. The Montana Department of Revenue says they will begin issuing rebates of 2021 individual income taxes to over 530,000 residents of Montana. The department anticipates distributing most rebates by August 31st, 2023. Taxpayers do not need to apply for this rebate. Money will be directly deposited into their bank accounts or a check will be sent depending on how the individuals filed their last income tax forms. The Department of Revenue notes that taxpayers must have paid income taxes in order to receive this rebate. 13 states across the U.S. that charge sales tax on groceries are experiencing a reckoning amid the cost of living crisis and high inflation. A sales tax on groceries currently exists in several cities in the states of Alabama, Arkansas, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, and Kansas. The tax means that in these states, consumers pay a tariff on their groceries on top of the cost of their daily or weekly shopping. With inflation being much higher, Americans really notice these tax cuts because they go to the grocery store every week. Only Alabama, Mississippi, and South Dakota of the 13 states still tax groceries at the state sales tax rate. So as the cost of living has increased in the past year, and with inflation reaching a peak of 9.1% in June 2022, and now hovering around 4%, more than half of these states are reconsidering whether they should be taxing their residents so much or even at all. For example, Kansas is fading out its grocery tax after dropping the rate from 6.5% to 4% at the beginning of this year. Virginia dropped its sales tax to 1% at the beginning of 2023. Alabama, Hawaii, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Utah are considering tax cuts. In Kansas and Oklahoma, the proposals have obtained bipartisan backing. While those who oppose cutting sales tax on groceries usually say that eliminating them would leave a hole in the state budgets, analysts have said that the initiative generally receives bipartisan backing and is a political win for both parties. Eliminating sales tax on groceries tends to be a popular initiative across the political spectrum and across all income spectrums, urban or rural. So dear friends, do you pay sales tax on your groceries? Please let me know in the comment section below. Well, my awesome and most beautiful friends, 
That is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Saturday. My dearest friends, thank you so very much for joining me here and for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I'll be giving away more gift cards every Friday. Remember, friends, if you'd like to enter these weekly giveaways, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. The winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Leon Chambers and Charles Wesson. Congratulations, my dearest friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or, friends, you could message me on my Facebook page. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.